Hey guys, hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today's video is going to be all about discipline and, and training your children. And so some people think, do you have some magic formula figuring out how to get your children to listen or how to get this? No, I don't have any magic formula. I just do what works in our family. And so if you ask my older children, I was definitely much stricter with them. Um, as I've had the next kind of set of children, we have definitely got a lot more laps on things. I think I've realized the importance of like what is really truly important and what really doesn't matter. And so, yeah, we get laps on things. You know, I find things that when they start to drive me crazy, attitudes, behaviors, and I think, oh, why are you doing that? And I think, you know what? It's not the child's fault, it's my fault. And so I realized that that's something I need to work on. And so there's been times, like I know, especially, I would think even now I go, I need to work on that. That child should not be doing that or they need to not be doing that. That's something I need to work on. So, And then I work on it. So for you, if you're looking at your child and you just think everything's wrong, I just want you to pinpoint on like one of the areas and work on just one of those areas and get that figured out before you move on to the next. That's what I do. Start with something and if you work on something, eventually it'll get better and then you can choose another one. So these are some different things that we have done over the years and with little ones as well to work on our um, character traits is what I consider it with training my children. Um, some things that we did, we would choose, I would sit down, right now I don't sit down and do that, but back in the day when I had more time to sit, um, when I was nursing a baby, I would write down different character traits that I wanted to teach my children. And I would focus on one a month. And so that was an easy way. And I think, oh my ever, because I would think of all the things that I was not doing as a mom and that I wanted to instill in my children. But I thought it looks so overwhelming when you look at a list and you see like 25, 30 traits, you're like, oh my goodness, there's so much. But if you just sit and focus on one a month and go, okay, because I used to do like one a week and then my, they just got too crazy. And I realized if I just focused on one thing a month and that whole month I focused on that, okay, we're gonna get that trait down. And then I worry about it and move to another one the next month. So that was a good way to do it. So what we did, these were just different ones that we have done in our family. So one of the things we talked about was we explained why we do preventive maintenance on our home, appliances and personal health in order to benefit in the long run. We talked about the diligent of taking care of things. This ranged from toys to not slamming the frigidator door, to not jumping on the couches, to the reason we brush and floss our teeth, the reason why we take vitamins, the reason why we drink water, the reason why we take care of ourselves, you know, the bathrooms, when you jump out of the tub, why we don't get water on the floor because it's gonna ruin the floor. Why we don't go and touch all the walls all the time. That's still an issue. Not as bad now that I have older ones, but when I had little ones, oh my goodness, we just wash our walls every week. We actually did that every week. So it was all of these things that we learned on, and it taught them the, that if we kept up on things, that it wasn't so overwhelming in the end. And that's true for our home. That's true for our appliances if you take care of them. It's true if you take care and return things where they go. If you leave your bike out in the rain, it gets wet, it gets rusty. But if you pick it up and put it away, it's gonna stay nice. Same thing with our body. If we eat and exercise regularly, we're not going to have all this extra fat on us and it's not going to be an issue later on and we're not going to have to pay doctor bills. We're not going to have to come up with some great way to lose the weight. And so all these things, like that was just one thing to work on. So that's one area you can work on. We also talk about the participation in certain activities and wearing certain clothing could attract the wrong friends and weaken the trust of authorities. And so that was big more when they're a little bit older and the reason why because my girls will say that why can't I wear those clothes like so and so why can't I do that or why can't I do why can't I do sleepovers why can't I go and attend this why can't I go to this friend's house who I don't know <laughs> all these things it gave us the good avenue and that's usually not to their older because when they're little they don't understand they're just like why can I spend the night they just want to know um, but as they're older it, it opened up a lot of doors for us to explain about the dangers of things that can happen different things that happen when you wear certain clothing, the kind of people that it attracts, things like that. Even though it's not them doing it, it's the other people the way they perceive them. So those were, that's another area we worked on. We also talked about why it's important to act um, and practice our character traits while we're out because it can save us from some bad situations about being alert when you're out so that you don't run into something happening to you or you know, being using caution with things or just because it could save you from a car accident. It could save you from running into the road and getting hit by a car or by not talking to strangers, those kind of things. All those things we talk a lot about how it protects us and saves us if we practice those outside of the home and not just in the home. We also talk about, as they're older, especially, um, we a lot of them now, when they're little, they don't really understand the whole concept of money, so they think, oh, I just want, I want it to why I want it, I want it, and I, I talk about, well, that's something we need to save up and buy later. We really um, instill in our kids to stay away from debt, 
to now the whole credit card trap we're really instilling them on buying used and um you know or saving for that if you want that expensive brand new purchase then save it and put it away so that you can purchase it later so that's big on i know like when, when i do um now that i'm making money and things like that it's like okay well this is my next goal this is the next thing i want to purchase and so i'm like i'm saving up that's gonna be my next thing and so um we used to our big saying was always oh, put on the list put on the list and then we'll get it in the when tax time came <laughs> And so now it's like, okay, this is my next purchase. That's the next thing I want to get, but I have to save up for it first instead of buying it now and paying for it later. So we, we really try to instill that in our kids as well. Um, we really talk about instilling safety rules, that there's rules for driving, there's rules for riding your bike, there's rules for swimming, all those things. And there's reasons why there's rules for those, why they can save you from potential damage, what can happen if you don't, and the importance of following and obeying those things. Some things I've done over the years, I know um, and my children still do it now, and we still work on that, is that when I'm speaking or another adult is speaking and um, in the home and they wanna talk, because kids are real big on just jumping in and talking whenever they wanna talk, and so I would um, let them know that touch my arm real gently, instead of saying, hey mom, hey mom, hey mom, because they would do that all day long. And so I tried to tell them to come to me and touch me on my arm so that to let me know that they would like to speak to me and then I can end my conversation when I can get to a point to end it and then I would speak to them. So that's a big thing because they always want to, especially with, your, with friends, they want to come in and they want to jump in in a conversation. And so I've taught them to come up and touch my arm and to wait patiently until I was ready to talk to them. We always worked on the first time, first time listening, that's big, especially when they're little. If you don't do it for a while, it's going to take them some time to work on this again. But we did this over and over when they were little, and we gave them small rewards like an M&M or a chocolate chip, things like that. Um, we would do it. We just went their babies. I mean, we do it with Maxine the dog. <laughs> So we would tell them, okay, you know, when they're off in the room playing and say, okay, and I'd call their name and Steven, come to mommy. And then he would come and he'd be all excited. We'd be all excited for him. And I'd give him like one M&M and he'd be like, whoa, you're giving me a treat. And then I would do it a few more times and give him one. I, and then, um, then I would do it sometimes without giving him anything just to let him know, okay, thank you for coming. And then I would wait till he was like engrossed in his play in his room with blocks or something. And then I would make sure to call him. And then... Um, he would do that, and if he didn't come, and I always have an older child there so that he, she, they could sit there and say to him, okay, mommy called, let's go run to mommy. And so I try to teach them to listen for my voice so I'm not screaming and yelling, and that when they hear my voice, they come the first time. So that's very important to do, the first time listening. I can, I have lapsed on that many times over the years and I realize I have to get back to that. And so I do over the time and then I realize, okay, that's a good thing. One, we used to play when they were little, a lot of times we do follow the directions. And so it helps in good listening skills, like go get me one red toy and jump, hop back on one foot when you bring it to me, or go put this ball in this room and pick up a dolly and take it to the bathroom or something like that. Just a couple different tasks so that they would learn to follow a series of directions. It's hard when they're little to give them multiple tasks because they won't remember, but you can use it with your age range like if you have a younger one just give them one task and have them bring it to you and then have somebody else do something to bring it to you we do this a lot we do this with school too like bring me three round objects or three bring me three toys that start with the letter b you know things like that and so just giving them multiple things to get them to follow directions is a good thing we do the self-control thing by practicing sitting on a bench without fidgeting um, this helps hugely when you're trying to get your child to sit during church because you might go to church and wonder how those mom get that child to sit in service for an hour it's not that it happened overnight, trust me, it did not happen overnight. <laughs> and so you have to work at it. And so what I would recommend, we started at a church and it was like two and a half hours long the service and my kids had to sit the whole time during it. And they learned to sit the entire time. When I didn't practice with them, it was stress because I was trying to deal with them to be quiet and to sit and it was not working. And then I realized that, you know what, if I just worked at home a little bit, that would save me. Even if I just started that next week, if I worked for 10 minutes a day, that was 10 to maybe 15 minutes that that child was gonna sit during service and be good. And so we do that now. We're actually gonna start it again when we start our fall school. And when we have a certain lesson, I think when we do our Spanish lesson, we're gonna practice sitting on a bench. And so there's nothing wrong with it. It teaches them good self-control. It teaches them to be able to sit and listen and not fidget, don't, I don't wanna move around and they have to sit, they're not allowed to touch anybody, they're not allowed to look around, they're not allowed to you know, kick their feet or sway, they're just supposed to focus on this person speaking. And so that's something we do, you start out small, start with 10 minutes on a bench, no fidgeting if anybody fidgets, nope, that's not what happened. And then we work on that every day when they do great, then we move up to 15, and then we move up to 20. And you can do this more and more and more, and then your child will learn to sit for that amount of time, and I promise you, and it works, and it does, it just is consistency, you have to do it every day. Once you do it every day, they will learn to sit. 
another thing we've taught over the years is that when you call your child's name, they don't say what, or I'll be there in just a minute. <laughs> so, um, teaching them to come. Yes, mom. A lot of people down here are big because it's in the South is on yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And that's a great thing. We just don't do that in our household. Not a bad thing. It's a great thing. I love when kids come in and they use yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And I'm like, hmm, I would like to implement that. But that is just not our family. So we're not big on saying yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. But it's awesome. I think it's a great thing. I'm not, not knocking it. I'm just saying just for our family, we just, I'm coming or, you know, or, or whatever they're doing, you know, if they're really, really tied up with something, they can't come. Okay. I will come when I can get there if something to throw in the bathroom or something, but not to say just a minute or let me finish or whatever, what? Just, yeah, they're not allowed to do that. They're supposed to come when they're called. And so that's something we do. Sometimes when my children, especially when they're little, they don't do this so much when they're older because they have that self-control most of the time. But when they're little and they get overwhelmed and they just can't be nice and they can't be kind, we did like the timeout chair. And so it was just, here, go ahead and sit. And my boys, through the winter time, we went with this a little bit. And I'd have them sit in the kitchen in corners, separate corners, because they were so, like, not nice to each other or they just got so much out of their stuff. Like, they needed a few minutes just to, like, okay. I need to calm down for a minute. I need some time to refocus, to get control of my body so that I can go do what I'm supposed to do. And so we would do the minutes based on the hour or the year that they are. And so if you're five years old and you're being bad, then you're gonna sit for five minutes. And so usually within that amount, if you're only two, you get two minutes. And so that's usually about the time span that we've kind of based it on. And usually letting them sit for that five minutes, I'd set a timer and it would go off and then I would go back to him and talk to him and okay, do you know why mommy put you in this spot? I put you here because you were not being a good listener or you were not being very kind to your sister. Um, I need you to behave properly. You know, you need to say you're sorry to your sister, whatever, blah, 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 whatever you need to make amends and do. And then we do that and then they're able to go back. And if they're bad again, they come back and sit again. Eventually they get sick of sitting and they won't do that. So timeout does work well, but consistency is the key. If we have a toy that both children want to play with, because that happens a lot in a large family home, um, we would set a timer and we'd set a timer and say, okay, they're going to play with this for 10 minutes. And then when the timer's done, then you're going to switch it to the other person, no matter who's playing, just teach them to take that time with that. Um, if you find that your child and your children are doing a lot of fighting and arguing over playtime, end the playtime. Best is to end the playtime and find something for them to do. Usually when children start bickering, I notice in our family when kids start bickering, they're either bored or we've been stuck inside a lot for a long period of time. Not too bad here, but I know back in Michigan we were stuck in the wintertime. I find that that happens, and that's when the time that you as a parent need to step in, and they need your guidance to help direct them to some kind of task that they can complete whether you get out let's do some play-doh together let's get some painting out things like that something some kind of constructive play and so um when we they were little my kids i would use a lot of very structured schedule we would like from 9 to 10 was a certain activity from 10 to 10 30 was an activity from 10 30 to 11 was an activity and you can go to my blog and you can read like the different things that we used to do um when we had it structured that way that was really good when you have a lot of little ones it's important to have structure almost like a preschool or um, kindergarten class, it was good to have that structure because the children knew what they had to do. There wasn't a lot of time for arguing. And then when you did give them free time, they usually are pretty good about not fighting because they want that free time. And I know that happens like in our, our house with our homeschooling. If I have it very structured and saying, we're gonna do school from this time, this time, and then you know what, from one to three is your free time or whatever it is. I guarantee that if they've been working from the time they got up until that one o'clock time and we were very structured in things, they weren't laps or allowed to be on their phone or their tablets, from one to three, they're pretty happy. They're usually pretty good about fine. Even if it's by themselves, that's fine, but they usually do find time where it's quiet and you know, constructive and it's not where they're bickering or arguing. And so that's something I notice. If you go into your, you know, if you find that your children are fighting or a lot over a lot of things, set up your schedule a little bit better. Try to get some more structured times in there so that when they do have free time, they appreciate it. Does that make sense? And if they don't appreciate it, then take that free time away and have them do something else <laughs> because then they're going to want it back. Something else that we do is um, we like to promote the healthy lifestyle. I mean, we're not crazy healthy and exercise all day long people, but we do like to promote that in our children. And so um, I like to instill in them the importance of exercising every day. And so we try to do something every single day because if we don't, it gets crazy um, when we're stuck on the side, when it's raining nonstop here, which it can do every day sometimes here, it's crazy and it can be overwhelming and the kids do start fighting over things. And so we try to set up times to make sure that we exercise each day. Like we'll go to the park, even today we're gonna go to the park. It's a little 
overcast day, but instead of the lake, because the lake is closed, we're going to do the park. And we'll just go to the park for a half hour. And even when it was cold in the winter, I said, okay, kids, even though it's freezing, let's get our gloves on and our coats, and we're going to go to the park for a half hour, just a half hour. Let's get out, let's run around, do some, just to get us to be doing something physical instead of just sitting in the house all day long. So that's important to do. It gives mom a break, it gives the kids a break. So if you can get out and just get some walking in, that helps too, and it helps change the atmosphere. I know when I had lots of little ones, it was like, it can just be a long drowning day. Like it was literally structure all day long because it has to be that way. There was no time, but literally, I remember not even getting outside some days. And I'm, when I could step outside and get a breather, I was like, oh my goodness, sunshine, this is life outside. It made me just feel so much better. And so when I was able to, I wrapped those babies up in a sling and I had my little Moby wrap on and I would take them outside and even though it was kind of crazy sometimes, okay, let's just get outside and walk around. We'd walk around the yard or we'd all pile in the stroller. I had a quadruple stroller and then we would do that and we would just, it was more work than anything. Trust me, it was more work <laughs> to get them ready and get them out the door, but it was well worth getting out and getting that fresh air and getting that change of scenery, giving them a change of scenery. And so that's important to do too, I think with kids. If you find them fighting, my best advice is, see what they're fighting about if you have you're dealing more with little ones usually little ones need a lot more structure i find if you're just doing nothing and letting them watch tv all day long they're gonna fight and i'm guilty of that we went through a time where we had no tv in our home and that was a great time that we went to when we had a lot of tv and then <laughs> we kind of came back and i think we have that nice healthy balance now and so um it's just setting up that time like what do we do i think i had a mom write in and ask me what do i how do we structure our day how do we do this how do I live without TV and then I think that if you just okay you're gonna you're gonna have to do something that's hard you as the mom is gonna have to do something you're gonna have to set up some kind of schedule for yourself like okay from 9 to 9 30 we are going to sit and play blocks together as a family we're all gonna do the blocks we're gonna have a nice fun time with it get out of the blocks just from 9 to 9 30 and then from 9 30 to 10 okay we're going to do Play-Doh, this is gonna be our Play-Doh time and we're gonna play Play-Doh and have a fun time or whatever, if that's too messy, I totally get that. I didn't do Play-Doh for a long time. But I'm just trying to give you just examples of setting up your days as what you can do for that time. Just to kind of give yourself like, okay, every day at 10 o'clock I know I'm gonna do this or okay, every day at 10.30 we are gonna put on the TV but it's gonna be the Wiggles. I don't even know if Wiggles are big anymore. But we would put on Wiggles and it'd be like dancing. I would dance with my kids and I would make them dance and we would move and laugh and have a fun time but it was getting us to do something and it was just some oh wiggles let's do wiggles today or whatever just something fun so those are it's good to do that when you have a lot of little ones to kind of set up your structured day if you can I mean just getting them up in the morning taking care of them feeding them breakfast cleaning that all up doing your chores and playing with them for a little bit and then it's already lunchtime, and then it's gonna be nap time already so <laughs> then you get your time in for your nap and then it's like, okay, you only got a few hours before your husband gets home and then you can have some freedom there a little bit. So just having that structured day helps. I find with my older kids here, when we're allowed to do whatever we want, if I'm busy doing my thing and I just leave them to kind of play and do whatever, they do get bored and they start getting snippy with each other and they get on each other's nerves. And so that's why through the summer, I had them do some school this year because in the summer we are free to do whatever we like to go to the lake we like to be free to do that I let them stay up late we sleep in I'm okay with all of that but I find like today it's kind of yucky out we're not doing a whole lot so I'm like hmm I know that if they're not gonna have to do something they're gonna be on each other and kind of start getting fighting and especially if you're in the house for a few days so okay I went down there already today and I was like okay make sure you do three pages of your school and they're like oh, okay but I'm like make sure you do three pages of your school okay and they will because it'll take up some time gets their brains working they other they also have other activities that they're gonna do and so but just having some sort of structure it's not a crazy very rigid schedule but it's just something so that they're not just sitting on their phones or their tablets or watching TV so if you find that they're fighting and arguing or something is stressing you change that choose one thing because yeah, I know if you haven't been doing anything and you're like oh my goodness there's so much is overwhelming start with one simple thing if you're having time hard time with your little ones Teach them to come when you first call them. First time come, teach that. Work on that for the next couple weeks, the next month on first time listening. First time listening on everything. First time listening, what's the rule? First time listening. Repeat that over and over. Your kids will get so sick of you saying it, but they're gonna remember, first time listening. And so, and then if they don't listen, make sure you, that you take them, put them in the timeout chair if they're not gonna listen. Okay, remember I called you the first time, you need to come. They will eventually get it really quick. I promise you, kids are really good on picking that stuff up. And so, 
work on just one thing. The next month, choose something else. And so if you look at my book here, um, Large Family Mothering, you can go to Amazon and purchase this. Purchase this. You can also get it on my blog, plain and not so plain.com. Inside, I have a whole chapter which discusses everything that I'm talking about right now. And then I also have a whole um, part, a couple pages on different character traits that we have studied and it was like availability alertness boldness compassion contentment dependability diligence endurance flexibility forgiveness and it goes on and on and on these were just different ones that we chose over the last 20 something years of our um family life and then we've chose one and we choose a bible verse to go with it we might put some stories with it or just some examples that went with it and so that was something we have done in our family and you can go to my blog and you can get this book if you'd like and if not you can just watch my videos for free i'm okay with that <laughs> so, something i'm going to add to my video i was just inside editing this video and i was thinking of all the things that we've done for discipline and getting our children to listen and i forgot to add one very important thing to this video and i really truly think this is the number one thing you should do yes all these things first time listening all these things are important but i think the number one thing is to nurture your child's heart um and love your child yes you love your child but like you have to nurture their heart when you have those like attitudes show up especially in the like 12 year old 13 year old age usually they get that little defiance age but if you really work on nurturing your child's heart spending time with them spending one-on-one -on -one time with them it's like that really makes a difference that helps the relationship it helps the bond it helps everything go they might still have a little bit of attitude because that just comes with that age but if you work on you know working on cultivating the heart issues with your children and talking to them getting them to talk, finding out what's important to them, not talking at them, but letting them talk to you. That's a big, big thing. So that's something I was thinking about. I thought, what is it that makes our children like listen, do that kind of thing? I mean, they still don't listen sometimes. They still don't do things. We have to work on things. But getting that heart working, it's like spending time. I know in our large family, it's hard sometimes to spend one-on-one -on -one with your children. And I don't get as much as a child, person that has one child or two children, but trying to schedule in those times of the day to spend time with one child, that's a huge deal to do that. I know like if I um, think about it more and I'm like, okay, I need to make sure I sit down and talk with this person or I need to spend some time talking with this person or I'm gonna run to the store. Let me take one child with me or let me take two children and spend time with that child just to kind of get those one-on-one -on -one moments in there because that's important. It's the heart, if you, if you cultivate their hearts, work on their hearts usually all the attitudes you get all the defiance you get as they get older when they're younger too but as they grow up and get older that's more of the heart issues so if you work on nurturing their hearts spending time with them that way that's going to make like the huge difference in the world i even think like i'm sure if you look up studies for even like children that aren't raised and with like discipline and character traits and all these things that we talk about in the christian world i guess but if you work on if you have love in that family laughter, all those kind of things, that really bonds a family together. So make sure you laugh. Make sure you laugh with your family. Make sure you are silly. I was more very rigid and didn't like to <laughs> upset the family and like, I need schedule. I need this, this, and this. And the husband comes around and he's just more free. And he's like, honey, we need to have fun. We just need to. I'm like, okay, but that's going to be a mess. So that's going to be whatever. But I realized the importance of just like letting go and doing that. And that's huge. And that's, um, that's a big thing. Like, it's, it's helped me be more relaxed as a mom. It's helped me be more like, let's just have fun. It's okay if they're getting dirty. Yeah, it's okay if this Play-Doh makes a big giant mess on my floor. It's okay if they're covered in paint or it's okay if they're all muddy from playing out in the sandbox in the rain. But all those things, it's like those are just making memories, spending time, cultivating hearts, cultivating relationship, cultivating the love with mom and dad and as a family unit. So that's another thing I wanted to add. So I'm, I'm gonna put this in here at the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will um, do my best to think of some more things that we've done over the years because sometimes it's hard to remember. And do another one if you have any specific uh, things that you're dealing with, I can maybe share with things that um, we have done over the years. So, but heart issue, heart issue is number one. Heart issue, cultivating that then like thinking of others those kind of things and how your behavior affects that other person if you don't listen if you don't share if you're mean blah blah, blah all those things so okay you guys have a wonderful day bye, -bye.